Good morning. Nowadays, mahirap maghanap ng inspiration, right? Ang daming challenging situations. Even now, naka-quarantine restrictions pa rin tayo. But you know, God is good kasi He always provides encouragement and inspiration sa ating lahat. For example, last Tokyo Olympics, nakuha natin ang ating kauna-unahang gold medal sa Olympics. Uh, galing yan kay Heidelin Diaz, ang ating weightlifter. Not only that, our Philippine team performed their best Olympics yet. One gold, two silver, one bronze. Isn't that, isn't that inspiring, mga kapatid? We waited for 97 years for that gold medal. It was worth it. Three weeks ago, natapos ang Gira Conference, and wow, what an amazing time for all the teens, coordinators, yung worship facilitators, mga panelists, and keynote speakers. So many people contributed for the success of this conference. Kaya naman, praise God, ang end result ay isang very inspiring worship service kung saan nakita natin nating mga teens na nag sa lahat ng aspeto ng service. Gusto ko lang take yung time para magpasalamat sa lahat ng naging kabahagi, mga nagdasal, nagsilbi, nag-contribute para maging success ang Gear Up. Maraming maraming salamat po sa inyong lahat. Ikaw kapatid, what inspires you? May mga tao na kapag nakita sila ng courage or story about courage, talagang nai-inspire sila. Like what we have seen sa Afghanistan lately. While others, they are inspired kapag merong life-changing experience or event na nangyari sa buhay nila. Like getting married, the birth of a child. Yung iba naman kapag nakakita ng isang magandang lugar. Like, you know, a day in the beach. Sa dami ng mga challenges natin araw-araw, kailangan natin ng inspiration. Bakit? Kasi minsan nakakawala ng motivation, right? We feel like we're dragging our feet, doing the same things. We feel down and sometimes discouraged. Naniniwala ako, the disciples of Jesus some 2,000 years ago must have felt the same thing when Jesus said to them, Whoever wants to be my disciple must deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. Mark chapter 8, verse 34. Hinamon niya yung mga tao na kung sino ang willing na mawala ang buhay niya para sa kanya at sa gospel, they will save it. Yung idea ng cross may have brought thoughts of death, crucifixion, suffering, or even torture. They may have doubts if they can even do this. Maybe they doubted the, 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 the Messiahship of Jesus. Is this what I signed for? I'm sure at this point, nagahanap sila ng inspiration. Their faith in Jesus needs to be rekindled. The title of the lesson for today is Faith Inspires. And that is our goal today. Ma-inspire tayo sa ating pananampalataya at marikindle ito so that we can move forward and grow uh, kahit na marami tayong challenges in the middle of the pandemic. Manalangin po tayo. Aming amang nasa langit, salamat po na sa kabila ng mga worries, anxieties, and fears na meron kami, lagi kayong nandyan para sa amin. Salamat po na dahil sa Panginoong Sus may direksyon at pag-asa kami sa gitna ng pandemya. Patuloy niyo po kaming ingatan at gabayan na makatulong din kami sa ibang naghahanap sa inyo. Mangusa po kayo sa amin, sampu ng mga pamilya at mga kaibigan na kasama namin today. We love you God. Thank you for this day. In Christ we pray. Amen. Let's pick up the story sa Mark chapter 9 verse 2 hanggang 8. Babasahin natin sa Tagalog ang salita ng Diyos. Pagkaraan ng anim na araw, isinama ni Jesus sina Pedro, Santiago at Juan sa isang mataas na bundok. Sila lang ang naroon. At habang nakatingin sila kay Jesus, nagbago ang kanyang anyo. Naging puting-puti ang damit niya at nakakasilaw tignan. Walang sino man dito sa mundo na makakapagpaputi na katulad noon. At nakita nila sina Elias at Moises na nakikipag-usap kay Jesus. Sinabi ni Pedro kay Jesus, Guro, mabuti na rito kami. Gagawa kami na tatlong kubol, isa para sa inyo, 
isa para kay Moises at isa para kay Elias. At ang ang nasabi niya, ito ang nasabi niya dahil hindi niya alam kung ano ang dapat niyang sabihin sapagkat sila ay takot na takot. Pagkatapos, tinakpan sila ng ulap at may narinig silang tinig mula sa ulap na nagsab, nagsasabi, ito ang minamahal kong anak, pakinggan niyo siya. Tumingin sila agad sa paligid pero wala nang ibang naroon kung hindi si Jesus na lang. Point number one, Inspired by the real Jesus. Inspired by the real Jesus. Sa tingin ko, ito na ang pinakamainam, pinakamagandang inspiration na pwede mong makuha sa buhay mo. Right? Hindi lang nila nakita si Jesus bilang isang tao, nakita nila ang tunay na anyo ni Jesus. Sabi nga sa Matthew, nag- nagliliwanag siya o nagliwanag siya na parang araw ang kanyang muka at ang damit niya ay naging puting-puti na parang liwanag. What an awesome sight. Di ba kamanghamanghang experience yun? Sa bundok kung saan inimbitahan ni Jesus, si Pedro, Santiago at si Juan na manalangin, doon nila nakita ang tunay at kagilagilalas na anyo ng ating Panginoon. I call that a mountaintop experience. You know, times like that, talagang faith building yon mga kapatid. Gaya ng Gear Up Conference, I'm sure so many people were inspired. You know, yung mga teens from all over the Philippines, Luzon, Visayas, Mindanao, Metro Manila, nagsama-sama sila para matuto, matrain. Yung mga facilitators, talagang ibinigay nila yung hearts nila from media team, worship team, D4G, yung preaching workshop, at saka mga various skills. What's amazing is, hindi lang nila tinuro yung talent or yung skills na kailangan, ishinare nila yung spiritual principles to prepare the teens for service sa kingdom ni God. Yung mga webinars and keynote speakers na meron sa gabi at sa hapon, talagang sobrang enlightening and inspiring. Ako personally, namangha ako sa transformation ng mga teens. Maraming nakadiscover na gusto pala nila yung magpainting like coffee painting, watercolor, Even journaling, you know, they, they enjoy doing that. You know, maraming teens, both male at saka female, sumama sila sa preaching workshop. Can you imagine that? Mga future leaders ng church. Maraming mga insecurities ang naalis. Bakit? Kasi sumali sila sa D4G. Nagsasayaw sila habang nag-workshop sila. And even worship classes. You know, they learn how to sing and refine yung kanilang uh, instruments or pagtugtog sa instruments. Equally amazing yung mga teens na natuto sa media workshop. All in all, I can go on and on and share all the transformations na nakita namin sa conference na to. But really, more than that, more than getting the skills or the talents, you know, ma-improve yung kung ano meron sila, is yung mahalin nila si God. Piliin nila magsilbi sa kingdom ni God. And what an awesome transformation from timid to giving, from insecure to out of themselves, it was a sight to behold. On the mountain, God wanted to assure Peter, James, and John that they can put their faith in Jesus. Not only that, that they should listen to Him. Yung vision nila kay Jesus was transformed. You see, mga kapatid, nakaka-experience tayo ng pagsubok at mga problema Gagawa at gagawa pa rin si God ng paraan para ma-inspire tayo. Palakasin ang pananapalataya natin at you know, tulungan tayo na kumilos at umabante sa ating buhay. Dadali niya tayo sa bundok para masilayan din natin ang kanyang kadakilaan. Parang si David sa Psalm 27 verse 4, sabi ron, One thing I ask from the Lord, this only do I seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. All the days of my life. To gaze upon the beauty of the Lord and to seek Him in His temple. Ano ang kailangan mabago sa pananaw mo tungkol sa ating Panginoon, kapatid? Nainip ko ba lately na parang ang tagal ng prayers mo? Yung parang sa tingin mo wala nang pakialam sa iyo si God? Do you feel discouraged na nagsin ka na naman or pumalpak ka na naman? Or naisip mo na 
bakit sa kabila ng magagandang nangyayari sa buhay ko at ng pamilya ko, eh, parang malungkot pa rin ako or unmotivated. Kapatid, baka panahon na para mabago o ulit ang pananaw mo tungkol kay Jesus. Na makita mo siya kung sino talaga siya. After the conference, may isang tina nagsabi sa akin, sana po conference ulit next week. I can't blame that teen kasi kahit ako gusto ko rin na conference ulit next week kasi nakaka-inspire. Pero you know, I realized, I personally, I needed rest. I was tired and sometimes I feel spiritually low. I, I realized I needed to connect with people and get inspired with Jesus again. I need to listen sa mga lesson ay tinuro ni Jesus sa akin personally sa conference. You know, I need to go back and reflect on, you know, the, the things that I can build upon para sa pananampalataya ko at sa pananampalataya ng iba. In short, there's a lot of things to do, a lot of work to be done. But more than that, I need to focus on Jesus. When we are in the mountain of glory, God wants us to see the real Jesus. It's amazing to see beautiful things happen, di ba? You know, things that are exciting and encouraging. But more than that, kapatid, tumingin tayo kay Jesus. He is greater than our worries and our fears. He is far more powerful than our problems and situations. Things may not completely change right away. But if you have the real picture of Jesus, our faith will be secured. We will have courage to keep moving forward. Let's go to the second point. Point number two, inspired by the examples of Jesus. Basahin natin yung verses 14 hanggang 29. Sa, sa salita ng Diyos pa rin, sabi rito, Pagdating ni Jesus sa kinaroroonan ng iba pa niyang mga tagasunod na naiwan, nakita nila na maraming tao ang nagtitipon doon. Naroroon din ang ilang tagapagturo ng kautusan na nakikipagtalo sa mga tagasunod ni Jesus. Nabigla ang mga tao na makita nila si Jesus at patakbo silang lumapit at bumati sa kanya. Tinong ni Jesus ang mga tagasunod niya, ano ang pinagtatalunan ninyo? May isang lalaki roon na sumagot, Guru, dinala ko po rito sa inyo ang anak kong lalaki dahil sinasaniban siya ng masamang espiritu at hindi na makapagsalita. Kapag sinasaniban siya ng masamang espiritu, natutumba siya. Bumubula ang bibig, na, nagngangalit ang mga ngipin at pagkatapos ay naninigas ang katawan niya. Nakiusap ako sa mga tagasunod nyo na palayain ang masamang espiritu pero hindi po nila kaya. Sinabi ni Jesus sa kanila, Kayong henerasyon ng mga walang pananampalataya, hanggang kailan ba ako magtitiis sa inyo? Dali nyo rito ang bata. Kaya dinala ang bata kay Jesus. Pero nang makita ng masamang espiritu si Jesus, pinangisay niya ang bata, itinumba at pinagulong-gulong sa lupa na bumubula ang bibig. Tinanong ni Jesus ang ama ng bata, kailan pa siya nagkaganyan? Sumagot ang ama, mula pa po sa pagkabata. Madalas siyang itinutumba ng masamang espiritu sa apoy o sa tubig para patayin. Kaya maawa po kayo sa amin. Kung may magagawa kayo, tulungan niyo po kami. Sinagot siya ni Jesus, Bakit mo sinasabing kung may magagawa ako? Ang lahat ng bagay ay magagawa ko sa taong sumasampalataya sa akin. Sumagot agad ang ama ng bata, Sumasampalataya po ako pero kulang pa. Dagdagan niyo po ang pananampalataya ko. Na makita ni Jesus na dumarami ang mga ta- ang mga taong paparating sa kanya, sinaway niya ang masamang espiritu at sinabi, Ikaw na espiritong nagpapapipi at nagpapabingi sa batang ito. Inuutusan kita, inuutusan kitang lumabas sa kanya at huwag ka nang babalik sa kanya. Sumigaw ang masamang espiritu, pinangisay ang bata at saka lumabas. Naging parang patay ang bata kaya sinabi ng karamihan, patay na siya. Pero hinawakan ni Jesus ang kamay ng bata at itinayo at tumayo ang bata. Nang, pagpaso, nang pumasok si Jesus sa bahay na tinutuluyan nila, tinanong siya ng mga tagasunod niya ng sila-sila lang, Bakit hindi po namin mapalayas ang masamang espiritu? Sinagot sila ni Jesus, Ang ganong uri ng masamang espiritu 
ay mapapalayas lang sa pamamagitan ng panalangin. Nakaka-relate ba kayo sa nangyari? Kagagaling lang nila sa bundok, nakita nila yung glory ni Jesus, tapos pagbaba nila, anong sumalubong sa kanila? Malaking kaguluhan. Mga tao nakikipag-argumento sa disipulo ni Jesus. But you know, in the middle of their arguments, the moment they saw Jesus, they stopped and focus on Him. Sa ibang mga passages, they were filled with awe and wonder. I'd like us to focus on two things that will inspire us about Jesus' example. Number one, Jesus rebuked faithlessness and directed them to prayer. Some scholars think that Jesus was addressing the crowd, but there are those who believe that Jesus was rebuking His disciples. If we go back sa verse 1 and 2, makikita natin na ang binigay ni Jesus sa kanila ay apat na bagay. Number one, power and authority to drive out all demons. Pangalawa, to cure diseases. Pangatlo, to proclaim the kingdom of God. And pangapat, to heal the sick. And to think, all this time, kasama nila si Jesus, why were they not able to drive out the demons? Kung nagawa nila previously, bakit ngayon hindi nila magawa? Ano sabi ni Jesus? This can only come out This can come out only by prayer. Sa isang pas- ibang passages, prayer and fasting. I think Jesus was trying to tell them na, yes, tinawag sila, yes, binigyan sila ng kakayahan, pero hindi nila ito magagawa or hindi nila ito magagamit kung wala si Jesus. Kung magre-relay lang sila sa abilities or experience nila, it will not work. They must remain spiritually connected to Jesus para magawa nila yung kanilang calling. Di ba magandang reminder to para sa ating lahat? Bakit kaya hindi natin mataboy yung mga demons na meron sa buhay natin? Maybe because we're just relying on ourselves. We're trusting our abilities, our skills. Maybe naging familiar na tayo sa mga nangyayari sa paligid natin or sa mga experience natin. Bakit? Kasi... Malawak na yung naabot natin or malayo na yung narating natin. To be honest, sometimes I fall into this trap thinking, oy, medyo alam ko na to or medyo nakita ko na yan. You know, sometimes the result is I start relying on myself and what I know or what I remember. And then, pagpalpak ako, saka ako lalapit kay God. Mga kapatid, I know you can relate. I know at one point all of us have that kind of experience. I want to call us, let's repent. Especially tayo mga matured Christians. Are you there, mga kapatid? Mga matured Christians, can I speak to you? The younger generation are looking at us. Whether we like it or not. They are eager to learn from us. Yung mga victories natin, yung mga defeats, yung mga success or mga failures, they want to know, they want to learn. We need to be great examples in humility, and personal relationship with God. Number two, Jesus renewed the Father's faith by driving out the demon. The Father was so desperate, yung anak niya was tormented by a demon to the point of death. Since childhood. Sobrang painful nito, di ba? If you're a parent and you see this in your child, wow, grabe. You know, sobrang hirap nito. Malamang na-shatter pa yung faith niya. Bakit? Or yung hope niya. Kasi nung dinala niya yung anak niya sa mga disciples ni si Jesus, they were not able to drive the demon. By the time na nandun na si Jesus, most likely yung faith niya naghihingalo na. Nakiusap siya ngayon kay Jesus kung may magagawa kayo. You know, can you see the hopelessness? Can you can you feel it? Diba? It's like ito na yung huling straw niya. You know, kung wala pa, kung hindi pa magagawa ni Jesus, then... All is lost. But you know what Jesus did? Hinamon niya yung faith ng tatay na yun. Kaya ko, pero sumasampalataya ka ba? In the end, the father renewed his faith. And kahit konti lang yung natira, alam niyo yung ginawa niya? Ibinigay niya kay Jesus. You know, sabi niya, nananampalataya ako, pero kulang pa. You know, tulungan niyo ako na palakihin pa yung pananampalataya ako. Kahit hindi rin niya natiyak kung mapapagaling talaga yung anak niya. Nakita niyo yung battle, right? 
Will I trust Jesus with this little faith that I have left? Or will they just give up? He trusted Jesus. And you know what happened in the end? He drove the demon and restored his son. Are you going through tough times lately? Is it driving you to be desperate kay God? Do you feel like may magagawa pa ba si God sa situation to? Or parang 50-50 na yung faith mo? Brothers and sisters, nothing is impossible with Jesus. He drove out the demon. He can drive out what's tormenting you. But do we have faith? That's the question. Even as small as a mustard seed, if we give it to Jesus, He can make it grow. Sa mga kaibigan at pamilya namin, kasama namin ngayon, Jesus is the only way. He knows your pain and struggles. Look up to Him. Discover the real Jesus in your life. Gaya nung tatay, please put your faith in Him. Gano man kalaki or kaliit ang meron ka ngayon. He will never fail. Willing po kaming tumulong sa inyo na makilala si God at magkaroon din ng tunay na relationship sa Kanya. That's what we do in the church. Ikaw naman, kung nag study ka ng Bible, ano pang hinihintay mo? Make the best decision you can ever make in your life by making Jesus your Lord and your Savior. Kung teen ka or college student, now is the best time to follow Jesus. Kung single ka naman or married, you can make the same decision as well. If you are in the seniors, kung seniors na po kayo, it's never too late to follow Jesus. In short, mga kapatid, let's make Jesus the Lord of your life. Repent and be baptized for the forgiveness of all your sins. ICOC Philippines, the world needs the real Jesus. Ang daming nagpapanggap ngayon na sila daw yung magbibigay ng tunay na pag-asa. You know, fame, fortune, you know, all these things. But sadly, they're all fake. They can never fulfill that inner longing na hinahanap ng mga tao sa paligid nila. What are we waiting for? Why are we wasting precious time by worrying and you know being doubtful or or being anxious about things? Remember that we made Jesus our Lord and Savior. It's time to see the real Jesus again. Once we do, we will see our faith renewed and strengthened once more. If you are not doing well lately, kapatid, go and ask for help. Connect to your brothers and sisters. Confess. Get the help that you need. Huwag kang mahiya kasi lahat naman tayo nagkakamali at nagkukulang. Kailangan ka namin. Huwag kang sumuko. Pumalik ka na, kapatid. Ikaw naman, if you're doing well spiritually, awesome. Amen. Go out and help your brother and sister. Pass on your faith. Share what you're learning para sila din ma-inspire. Help your brother or sister get back on their feet. In closing, ang pinakamainam na inspirasyon na pwede nating panghawakan ngayon ay yung galing sa ating Panginoong si Jesus. Isuko natin ang lahat ng takot, pangamba at alalahanin sa Kanya. Ibigay din natin ang ating pananampalataya na kahit man, gano'n man to kalaki o kaliit, alam natin na may magagawa ang ating Panginoon sa buhay natin. Bilang isang pamilya ng Diyos, pag sumikapan natin na magkaroon ng pananampalatayang nagbibigay inspirasyon. Maraming salamat po sa pakikinig and may God bless you and keep you during the challenging times. Amen.